Hey, is this thing on? I guess it is. I guess we're doing this. Uh, syncing remote files because SSDs are expensive. Hello, and welcome to my semi-annual Dark Table video. I hope you've had a good year. It's been about a year since I posted anything. Um, today, I am back on a Mac, as I said I would be at one point. Um, I went ahead and um, got the old MacBook Pro out, decided to make a video on working with remote images in Darktable. Um, when I say remote image, I mean images that are stored, um, images or files that are stored either on a NAS, a file server, a USB hard drive, a um, uh, Thunderbolt USB 3 type RAID device, uh, just basically any type of storage that is not permanently attached to your computer. Um, basically just not your internal hard drive. Uh, this is a handy feature to have because raw files are big, SSDs are expensive, and um, offer no redundancy on their own. So uh, having your files on some sort of RAID or BTREFS or ZFS type setup, um, remember for kids those aren't backup, they're just there for operational redundancy, um, not actual backup, so please have a proper backup strategy. Um, is much preferred over just taking everything on an SSD inside your laptop, plus um, you run out of space. No good. Um, uh, Darktable makes it easier to work with these files and shift them around within the Lighttable module itself, so you can take your files, um, copy them to your local hard drive, edit them on the run uh, while you're on the road or not at your desk, come back and then sync your edits back to your um, uh, removable storage, we'll say, you know, file server, NAS, USB, Thunderbolt, whatever you have. Um, I had these pictures here, which are nothing special. They're just pictures I took um, uh, while I was meandering around town with my camera. In fact, um, here they are. Here are the files themselves. And I'll preview one up here just to show you. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what's in the light table. Um, they are stored here, you can see, on my file server, uh, which is mounted with SMB, uh, also known as CIFS, Common Internet File System, um, which is a protocol that if you have, you know, a Synology NAS, uh, I'm just using a Debian machine, I have a file server, it's just an, uh, an old uh, old machine, I um well, not really an old machine, it's a specialty machine that I have built and put Debian on and, and, and made the RAID array and all that stuff. Um, so it, it is basically a homemade appliance, but you know, Synology NAS, all that stuff. Um, uh, what is it? Disk station disk. I get, there's another brand out there. They all work the same way. Um, and CIFS is a common way to share files. Um, and so this makes it easy for me to share my images between multiple machines. Um, I'm not a big Mac user anymore. I don't really use this machine that much. I don't use it with light dark table just because uh, my Linux machines are faster than this um, and whatnot. So it's handy to have those stored on a on a remotely accessible um, uh, set of storage. Um, now, <clears throat> say I don't want to be at my desk. I want to be somewhere else. I want to edit these. How would I go about that? If I just unmounted my little file server over here, I would not be able um, <clears throat> to edit these anymore. Darktable would say, I cannot, you know, um, these files are unavailable. Fair enough. How do we solve that? Easiest way to do that is to go over here in the top right hand corner, click select all. Um, now you don't have to select all your images. In fact, I don't recommend keeping all your images on your <clears throat> portable machine. Um, for a few reasons, uh, but you can select just a few, a handful, a couple of folders worth to keep locally if you're going to edit them. Um, but I'm just selecting this whole folder just to make it easy because it's only 17 pictures. Um, and then come down here in the selected images area and say copy the image locally. I'm going to click that and it's going to take a minute here and you see it's adding um, little tabs here on the corner, these little white tabs. Um, this is new to Darktable 2.6, I believe. In previous versions, it would have been a white circle, like right here on the image. Um, they both mean the same thing. When it's got this white tab or white circle here, um, that means that the file is a local copy. And Darktable, Dark, 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 dark <coughs> excuse me, Darktable <laughs> will keep track of where the remote file is. So the next time you plug in, you can then resync your edits. So. 
Um, now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, eject my file server. And you can see it disappears from the desktop. It's no longer there. Um, but I can still open and edit these files as if they were uh, on my machine locally, or as if it was still attached. Um, because they are kept as a local copy. It's going to come up here. There it is. I can come in here and, and, and adjust. I'm just going to make some random adjustments because we're only doing this to show the file management portion. We're not really interested in the actual editing at the moment. Um, let's see. Yeah. yeah, I don't really use the Mac for editing anymore. It just kind of sits around for the few things, few times a year I need. Um, something that doesn't work in Linux, mainly my scanner. <laughs> in fact, this thing's still running High Sierra um, because I have some stuff that's 32-bit and will not work in Mojave. So it'll be my High Sierra. It's a 2015 model. It's not the fastest. It's not the fastest horse in the old stable, but um, it'll get the job done. It spins most of the time. It's a looking at computer and don't really use it too much. I don't like that white balance. We'll bring that up warmer. Um, most of the time I use a much faster Linux machine. Oh, too hot, too hot. But mostly, I think it's a GTK3 thing. That's what the interface of Darktable is written in. Is not the fastest on a Mac. Uh, even slower Linux machines it's a little faster. I don't think that's Darktable's fault. Um, that is purely a Mac weirdness with non-Mac windowing GUI things. Um, but anyway, so I've come in here and I've made a few, what kind of lens corrections? I made a few edits. Um, I'll pop back out the light table. I'll give this one, I'll hit the five key, give it five stars. That way, that's my own little system to know I've edited something. And, um, you can see here that, um, the image collection has updated and there's a strike through this now. That means that the, um, <clears throat> remote location or the ta detachable storage is no longer available so it can't um you know save the the you can't you can't contact it so you know you're working with a local copy then now let's say you know i've done my edits i want to come back and and resync this back to my um remote hard drive or my my local drive or my remote uh, file server so i'm going to go over here on my other monitor the built-in monitor on the Mac here and connect. I may have to blank this out because it may pop up on the main screen anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to my file server. Ah, yep. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, man. Leaking eight data all over the place. And, oh, there it goes. We see that the file server is popped back up on the desktop. Um, and now we can tell Darktable to go ahead and set these all back, send these all these edits back to the file server. So we do this simply, select all again, basically select all images, all the images you want to resync back. Um, again, doesn't have to be the whole folder. It can be um, a handful of images. It could be multiple folders, just however many you want to do. And then you need to uh, come down here and next to where we click copy copy locally earlier we can resync the local copy so we'll go ahead and click that and what that does is it sends all your edits over to your detachable storage your XMP files where Darktable stores all that information and deletes the local copy a few caveats on this functionality do not try if you have like a uh, a laptop with like a 200 gig or a 500 gig SSD, and you've got terabytes of images. Um, speaking of laptops, this thing sounds like it's about to take off. This is it's a, like a quad core i7. It's not happy with recording and using Darktable at the same time. Uh, <laughs> ooh, this is an old 2015 model, so it doesn't have <clears throat> quite the lead in its pencil as what I'm used to as I use on my Linux machines. Um, Man, that thing's really screaming like a banshee. I hope it's not on the mic. But anyway, um, what was I thinking? Oh, yes. Um, I would not keep it on your SSD. So if you only have a 200 or 500 gig SSD and you say you've got a couple terabytes of images or a terabyte of images, um, you, have to, you won't be able to copy all of your files over. 
you'll just be able to do a few um, because you have to have as much hard drive space available on your internal drive where your home folder is located um, as you have images. So like right now I have 126 gigabytes available. That means I can't copy more than 126 gigs of images over. Um, that's nowhere near my whole library. <laughs> Uh, this works really well for if you're like on a trip or something and you fill up a 16 or 32 gig SD card. Um, you know, you can copy the images to your hard drive, to your machine, edit them, and then sync them back. Um, you know, 32 gig card, you can throw that on, you can keep that on your SSD, on your, uh, on your internal hard drive or SSD, uh, edit them um, pretty easily. It's not going to take up a lot of space and Darktable will automatically clean up after itself and free that space when you're done. Um, but again, remember, you can't put more images on your drive than you've got free space. So uh, keep so that that's an important distinction. Uh, this works a lot better than using something like rsync to sync between like a local drive on the machine and a remote drive or a remote storage like a network device or or another like a disk station Thunderbolt disk station thing, uh, just because. Um, rsync i've had issues with it and xmp files going the wrong way and um screwing up edits so I, I i tend to use this this works great it's built right in um and dark table keeps track of where the images need to go when you resync and everything and and it works on the mac it works on the linux i'm assuming it works on windows i don't have any way of testing that but uh, if you're using windows and dark table give it a shot and let me know in the comments but uh otherwise Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll see me again soon.